So this is the sequel to Fortress starring Christopher Lambert and he's back again in yet another Fortress. So this is set about 10 years after the original film and he's living out in the middle of nowhere with his wife and son. Love how his wife has changed. Oh yeah, different actress, sorry. So if you've never seen Fortress or seen my review of it from a few years ago, here's a quick summary just for you. It's got Lambert in it, okay? No, okay. So the future laws permit only one child. So in the event that you don't practice safe sex and have kiddies popping out willy-nilly, you're going to get locked up in the fortress. It's a prison. And through the film, he goes on a magical mystery adventure meeting loads of idiots, including Bennett from Commando, and he and his wife escaped in the end and everybody else died. So bringing us up to speed, he's basically still on the run from this evil company called Mentel. Now suddenly, out of the blue, a few helicopters fly out from nowhere and try to kill Lambert and his family. I love how he ushers his family out of the way and shuts the gate behind him. It's like, nah, I don't want to try and escape with you guys. I'd rather stay and fight the bad guys and probably die in the process. And speaking of fighting, Mentel can't even cope with Christopher Lambert. They've got robots, they've got helicopters after him, they've got men with big ass guns, they've got boats, but drop an average net on him and he's caught just like a fish. Now the real bad thing about this film is the plot isn't well thought out and it seems to rush through everything in a flash without explaining much or developing things. It's certainly not shit, because at least it gets things moving instead of dragging its fat ass along the floor, but you know how it is with films like this. So, now that Christopher's caught as part of his plan, obviously, probably not, but anyway, he gets to entertain us for the next 80 minutes in hilarious wooden yet enthralling action that only a Frenchman could do. So as you can guess, he's determined to escape and get back to his family. So he makes friends with a bunch of random people, just like he did in the first Fortress, and they're all really annoying. There's this woman who he actually knows from his past, this black guy who thinks he's a technology expert. Well, what am I talking about? He attaches a camera to a cockroach's optic nerve so he can't be all that bad. This guy who has his brain fried and becomes brain dead, basically. Obviously. And this guy who just talks shit most of the time. I don't even know how he becomes part of the team, he just suddenly starts hanging around with them like fly around shit. So Lambert hides in a box hoping to escape the prison. Except this is set in space. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you always hear about prisons being overpopulated, so the solution in the future, I guess, is to send criminals into space. How much is that going to cost the average taxpayer? Where does taxpayers' money go to in the future? Schools? No. Hospitals? No. Laying new roads? No. It goes to sending criminals into outer space. Jesus Christ. So here's Pam Greer popping up and she only appears fleetingly, talking to this dick, and he is a dick, with the most ludicrous scripted dialogue and his acting is atrocious. It's quite embarrassing to watch, to be honest. I mean, I've never seen this guy prior to this film or since, so I guess this was a career killer for him. Poor bastard. Look at these guys, why is it in prison movies or any Hollywood film for that matter? Do guys always be muscular and have six packs of muscles coming out of their brains and muscles on top of that? It's not real. People are fat, people are skinny, people have disgusting ugly pot bellies. Where are the ugly bastards? Not that we really want to see ugly bastards anyway. Uh, mm, look, a she-man. It's just not needed. Where are the everyday Joes? Say hello to this stock bad guy who doesn't like the criminals on board the space station and decides they're all expendable, so leaves them outside in an asteroid shower. <laughs> Good man. Lambert makes it out, sure, but this guy doesn't. I don't know who he is anyway, so who cares? So the whole plot is that our pal Christopher Lambert is dragging his stupid idiotic friends along for the ride to get back home to Earth somehow. Naturally, he's got a plan that works a treat. Now, I know the big question on everybody's lips watching this video is what happens with She-Man? Now, I've got to say, what a great character. He could have, sorry, she could have her own spin-off series. She-Man and the Masters of the Universe or something. Sounds quite promising, doesn't it? So, in a truly pointless but hilarious scene, this ugly twat steals her food she kicks the shit out of him and then beats up a guard while everybody else just gets a case of migraines. Yeah, it's like Fortress where they get some serious stomach pains due to the implants. So as punishment, it's time to wave bye-bye to the wonderful She-Man as she's won a first-class trip into outer space and just look at her floating away in excitement. 
brilliant stuff. Now let's jump back to the stock bad guy. He decides it's about time to let the ugly bastard have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Lambert, except the ugly twat can have a flamethrower. Quality top-notch fighting, if you're about 70 years old and stiff as a board. Lambert wins though, cause he's just the dog's bollocks, but you already knew that because he played Raiden in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Do you ever get annoyed by stupid adverts on TV? Well, if you do, just follow in this guy's footsteps and ram your head into the screen. What's the point in that? Oh yeah, so that you can find this little channel changer and when Einstein gets his hands on it, he can turn it into something where they can watch every camera in the prison, including the view of every single prisoner. This thing gives them the idea of planting a camera onto a cockroach. Fuck knows why a cockroach is living in space, but there you go. Now the picture quality is awful, but the brain dead guy listens to the sound of the number panels and works it out. What a load of shit. I love this film because it's so daft. The cockroach gets squashed and this guy gets sad. Why weren't you upset to the cockroach when Smart Alec was rowing a bloody camera up its goddamn ass? Man alive. So anyway, by this point, Lambert's talked crap with a bunch of Russians who just happen to have a spaceship coming to take them back to Earth, so they all team up, but not before What's-His-Face decides to drop a completely random and irrelevant bombshell and change his voice. Just watch this and listen. The Russians have a shuttle. Excuse me? What makes you think they have a shuttle? Because I'm a lieutenant with the Russian Federal Security Service. Okay, big deal, you're only cannon fodder anyway, and what's your point in this tale? You're only second to King Lambert, so it's not a great loss when you're shot. Goodbye, pig! Did that Russian just call him a pig? <laughs> pig. So there they go, the Russians begin to fly home without Lambert and his friends, but they get shot and die. Cool. Now Lambert gets thrown outside into space, just for a laugh, and this kind of reminds me of a scene from Event Horizon for some reason. Now he manages to find his way back into the prison though and team up with Pam Greer. Yeah, she suddenly decided to make yet another meaningless fleeting appearance. So the space station starts to fall to pieces. The bad guy who is a complete dick, and he is a dick, gets electrocuted and look at him go. He should start his own fucking acting school if you ask me. <laughs> and Lambert gets on a ship along with a bunch of random goons who haven't even appeared in the film at all until now. Like, who's that at the back? How about him? Her? This is stupid. I love all the reactions when the ship moves. I literally replayed this scene to equal the amount of people on screen so I could watch their unique reactions. Lambert wins, hands down. That face is priceless, while Pam Greer looks like a stuffed dead animal. I mean, that's what Pam Greer looks like normally, and in this scene here, yeah, she looks like a dead stuffed animal. Now I have to go on record as saying that Fortress 2 isn't all that bad, but in order to enjoy it to the extremes, I honestly think you have to be intoxicated. Or maybe sober. Mmm, golden ale. Not one of my personal recommendations. Actually, what am I talking about? I should be plugging every single beer. You know, whether it be good or bad, just so I get a few pennies coming my way. Mmm, golden ale. The best beer I've had for a while. So, Fortress 1 was a pretty good film, but this is sadly pretty poor. So go grab a few beers to help you be entertained by mind-numbing crapness. 4 out of 10.